welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today I'm really excited to be looking at two classic big bore Yamaha motorcycles. The focus of this review is not really to compare which one of these bikes is the quickest or the fastest or the best performing bike. That's kind of a no-brainer. We'll be looking at the evolution of Yamaha's big bore air-cooled four-cylinder motorcycles between the late 70s when the XS1100 debuted and the mid 80s when the FJ 1100 and FJ 1200 were introduced. In a couple of minutes I'll be gearing up and we will take both of these bikes out on the road and see what they're like to ride. We'll do some roll-on comparison tests between the two. If you're like me and you like classic muscle bikes from the 1970s and 1980s please like and subscribe. I feature lots of great classic muscle bike content on this channel. In 1978 when Yamaha's XS1100 originally debuted for a time, it was the quickest production motorcycle that money could buy. And even after it had been superseded as the ultimate king of the quarter mile, it was still the king of roll-on. And so in any contest of speed from 40 to 80 miles an hour in top gear, the XS1100 just walked away from pretty much any other production bike out. And it held that title for quite a long time. The XS1100 has a big eight valve, four-cylinder motor. It's an air-cooled motor and at the time of its debut all of the other big bikes were a thousand cc's and so the 1100 cc motor in this bike really put everybody else on the trailer and the amount of torque and the amount of mid-range and the amount of ultimate power that it made were really mind-boggling at the time and for a shaft drive bike to be the quickest production bike out just tells you how much power it had to put out to compete with the chain drive bikes from the other manufacturers. In 1979, Yamaha introduced the special version of the XS1100, and it was more of a cruiser-style bike. This is the XS1100 Special. It is a 1980 model year bike. It's got 5,000 original miles on it, and it is still a quick bike. It's still a really fun bike to ride. I have some review videos of this bike and some comparisons with the other muscle cruisers from the time, so please feel free to check those out as well. While the Yamaha was a very quick bike in a straight line and a very smooth bike, and it made a very good touring bike and cross-country bike, it wasn't all sunshine and roses. The suspension on the bike and the heft of the bike made it handle kind of odd. It had a little bit of a rake to the front end and so it was stable in a straight line and again that aided in the touring ability of the bike but it made it a little bit odd in the corners and you had to get used to it. It's not a bike that really likes to be hustled in the corners. Additionally even though this bike has the big dual disc brakes and even though I've upgraded this bike with steel braided brake lines and I've gone to the EBC floating rotors on it, the brake lever feel at the front end of the bike is a little bit wooden and it just does not give the feedback of say this FJ1200 or even some of its contemporaries. The only other thing that people sometimes complain about was the transmission on the XS1100 could sometimes be a little bit notchy. If you have one of these and it runs well and it doesn't pop out of gear or anything, man, treat it nice. These things were known for eating second gear and it's just due to the power of the bike and some people were abusive on them and they could blow out second gear. It's an expensive fix. If your bike doesn't do it, you don't want it to do it, so treat them nice. The XS1100 was Yamaha's first big bore four-cylinder bike and they really did a good job with it right out of the gate. It was a super, super nice machine. Moving on to Yamaha's FJ1200. The FJ1200 is really an evolution of the FJ1100 that debuted in 1984. The FJ1200 featured a bored out FJ1100 motor. It has a revised transmission for better shifting on it. It also had a somewhat revised fairing on it, although the colors were the same and it looked similar to the FJ1100. The windshield was raked back more steeply than on the FJ1100 and it gave very clean airflow for the rider. The belly pan was also revised somewhat to give better airflow and cooling flow around the engine compartment. The exhaust on the FJ1200 was also opened up just a little bit to give more room for the exhaust gases flowing from the slightly bigger engine. By 86, Yamaha had really gotten its act together with the suspension on the bikes, and this one features adjustable spring preload in the front and adjustable rebound damping. It also features anti-dive. The brakes on this bike are very good for the time period. 
They are large vented disc rotors and they are acted on by twin piston calipers. The FJ1200 has a hydraulic clutch and it works very well with the slick shifting five speed transmission on this bike. Out back, the FJ1200 has an aluminum box section swing arm, it has chain drive, it also has dual piston calipers in the back acting on a single vented disc, and it had the linkage type rear suspension which gave it better control. One feature of the FJ1200 that's very much like the original XS1100 is that this bike was king of the roll-on contest. From 40 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour, there was not a quicker production bike available. And this bike bested known muscle bikes such as the VMAX and the V65 Magna and even Suzuki's GS1150ES. One interesting thing about the motor in the FJ1200, it is a 16-valve motor but it is still an air-cooled motor. It has a very large oil cooler on it. Most of the competition to the FJ1200 had liquid-cooled motors in them. All right, enough talk. What are these bikes like out on the road? How does late 70s technology compare with mid 80s technology? I'm gonna gear up, I'll bring the camera along. Let's find out together. Let's ride. I am currently riding Yamaha's 1980 XS 1100 Special and I'm riding this back to back with Yamaha's own 1986 FJ 1200 and man it's just an amazing I get on this bike and it's such a nice ride and it's set up like a standard style motorcycle now I have put lower bars on this particular bike just to give it a more neutral seating position instead of the pullback bars that were on it. These bars are much more comfortable for me. But this is just a nice riding, very smooth powerhouse of a standard style motorcycle. The XS 1100 was really king of the quick when it debuted in 1978. And even though some other bikes came along and superseded it as the quickest bike in the quarter mile, where this bike really shined was it had incredible mid-range. And so in any kind of roll-on contest in top gear, this bike would just pull away from almost any other bike that it competed against. The model I'm riding is the special model and it's more of a cruiser style than the original more standard style motorcycle but it has the same engine, uh, same shaft drive and the special version of the XS1100 supposedly has even better handling. This bike features a large 1100cc 8-valve, 4-cylinder motor. It's an air-cooled motor. It has shaft final drive. And the motor itself is rubber-mounted, so it makes the motor very, very smooth. It's a very smooth-running bike. And it makes the XS1100 such a great touring bike. And as long as you're not getting into the corners too hot, this bike handles fairly well. 
To me, the chassis just says, if you go in a little bit too briskly, the chassis just says, hey, uh, back it off a little bit. I have upgraded the rear shocks on this bike and I've upgraded the front brakes to help the handling a bit and to help the braking performance, just as safety features. And so it does stop nicely. It doesn't have as much feedback or feel as the FJ1200 brakes do, even in standard form. And it's still a powerhouse. The ride on this bike is well controlled. It's somewhat firm, but it's by no means punishing, and this bike is certainly all day comfortable. It's got that large seat on it that just allows you to rack up the miles, and there's almost no vibration from this 1100cc motor. Very nice. Even up through the RPM range, this bike is super smooth. And as you get on the throttle, it's almost less vibration than just when you're cruising along at 55 miles an hour. This bike revs just under 4,000 RPM at 55. And it's one of the smoothest four-cylinder bikes I've ever ridden. Like the FJ1200, this Yamaha XS1100 is very stable at speed. It has a little bit of a raked out front end on it, and that enhances the stability. One area where the FJ1200 really has an advantage over this bike is in the low speed corners. I really have to fight this bike a little bit in the corners just to kind of keep it down in. And it's almost as if it has a high balancing point and it either wants to kind of dip down into the corners and fall in or stand up a little bit. So it just takes a little bit more effort. It takes getting used to. It's not really a big deal, but it's noteworthy. These bikes are both all day comfortable mileage eaters. And this bike, if you wanted to do some serious highway touring, you would definitely need to add a windshield. Both the bikes have awesome mid-range. They both just scoot right out of the corners, even from a low RPM. I'm currently riding Yamaha's mighty 1986 FJ1200 and I'm riding this back to back with Yamaha's 1980 XS1100 Special. And man, the first thing I notice is I sit down in this bike. I sit much lower, the seat height is lower, the spike feels long and low, and I feel more a part of the bike instead of a separate item up on top of the bike. The brakes on this bike have much better feel and the corner roll-in is much easier on this machine. Both of these bikes are five speeds. The transmission in this FJ1200 definitely shifts more precisely and it's just easier. I don't ever get the feeling that I might miss a shift.
roll in through low speed corners is very effortless on this bike i don't have to fight it to keep it down in the corners like i do on the xs at lower speeds Have a little bit of the lean into the bars. The wind protection on this bike is very nice. The fairing design on it is such that it doesn't give me a lot of wind turbulence in my helmet. It's a very quiet ride. And because of the lean, this would be more suited for higher speed riding over long distances. This is really a good sport touring bike. Suspension is well controlled under braking. And there's absolutely no need to wind either of these bikes out when you're accelerating. You can ride them both very quickly and not have your RPM wound tight. Though both of these bikes are very smooth and they both have rubber mounted engines, I do get more vibration through the handlebars on this FJ1200. I wouldn't say this bike is super nimble with its long and low stance, but it's very stable and it rolls in the corners very nicely minimal effort and it just holds a line wherever you're at it doesn't want to stand up or drop in on this fj as with most bikes with a full fairing I actually get a little bit more engine heat coming off the motor of the bike than they do on the naked bikes like the XS1100. And while that's great on a day where it's 70 degrees or below, on a warm day that can really kind of roast your lower legs and the under part of your thighs. I'm really surprised at how plush this bike is and how comfortable that long wheelbase I think soaks up some of the bumps as well and this is a nice comfortable place to be I have a little bit less leg room on the FJ than I do on the XS 1100 when you look at the FJ 1200 it's obviously a sport bike and so it would be easy to assume that it has a very narrow range of riding ability and it, you know it would only be a bike that you could go fast on and the surprising thing is between these two bikes this fj has a much broader range of riding ability than the xs 1100 and not only can you do sport riding on this fj but you can just cruise around on it you can do touring on it and it does each of those tasks very, very competently. Another surprising thing to me is that this FJ is so easy to use. And it's surprising because of how much performance is actually on tap, but it never feels edgy. It just feels comfortable, competent, and smooth.
lot of fun. It's super cool to be able to ride these classic bikes back to back and to get a feel for them, to get a feel for what they're like out on the road. I was actually really surprised at how nicely this Yamaha XS 1100 rides. It is so smooth, it's still a powerhouse, it's entertaining to ride, but you can ride it at a legal pace and it doesn't pressure you to go fast, but when you want it, it just has it in a straight line. As long as you keep your cornering speeds to a moderate level and you're just out enjoying the day, this XS 1100, it doesn't handle bad, the brakes are adequate, but it's only when you kind of wick it up and are driving it in a sporting fashion that you really want some better feedback from the front brakes and a little bit better feel from the suspension. I know that's not really what this bike is designed for, but I like to have that option on my bikes if possible. And that brings us to this FJ 1200. Man, what a fantastic machine. I can really feel the heritage of the XS 1100 when I drive the FJ 1200. It has that torquey, very relaxed motor, and I think the most surprising thing to me on the FJ was it never feels edgy. It always feels relaxed. It's very smooth in the transitions. The transmission itself is a very smooth unit. I do get a little bit more buzz through the handlebars on the FJ 1200 than I actually get on the XS 1100. And really that's kind of the only fly in the ointment on that bike is the little bit of vibration that you get sometimes. By the time the FJ 1200 debuted, the suspension was so much more sophisticated, the brakes were so much better, the transmission was so much more refined, and you could tell by the time the FJ1200 came out, they were no longer novices in the big bore game. And for many years, the FJ1200 went on to serve as a sport touring bike and a very competent one at that. Not only did the FJ1200 outlast any of its other air-cooled contemporaries, it also outlasted most of the liquid cool rivals that it had at the time. That's how good it is. The only negatives with the FJ1200 are kind of shared with any fully fared bike and any bike that has a more racy seating position. And that is the seating tuck can get a little bit old at lower speeds if you're doing less than highway speeds. This bike also generates a decent amount of engine heat and you get that on your lower legs and the kind of the backs of your thighs as you're riding. On a hot day, it can be kind of brutal but on a cold day, it's really nice. And the only other downside for me is, being a tall guy, the FJ1200 has less leg room than this XS1100 does. If I'm going on a really long distance trip, or I want to wick it up, or have the ability to really perform in the corners, the FJ1200 is definitely going to be my pick of these two bikes. But if I'm just tooling down through the countryside on a nice day, and I want a relaxing ride, and I want to be able to just enjoy myself and have a smooth ride and just enjoy the bare essentials of a motorcycle, man, this XS 1100 is hard to beat. It's so smooth, it's so easy, it doesn't pressure you to go fast, but it does have that straight line performance on tap anytime you want. Given how easily the FJ 1200 drives, I was shocked at how quick it is in the 40 to 80 mile an hour roll-on contest. Prior to testing the FJ 1200, this XS 1100 had tied for the quickest at 8.2 seconds. The fact that the FJ 1200 did that test in 6.3 seconds just shows you how much advancement there had been in the space of time in that five or six year period that really existed between the introduction of these bikes. All right, I'd love to know what you guys think. If there are any Yamaha FJ 1200 fans out there or any Yamaha XS 1100 fans out there, please feel free to give a shout out in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, enjoy the ride.